to worship the God? Did you come to praise the Lord? There's a Greek word for shout, uh, and it's kazar, K-A-Z-O, kazar. Kazo means more than just to make a loud noise. It means a continuous uh, celebration uh, with your vocals. So Mama Nim back in the day used to say, boy, I got my shout on this morning. Now we say, I praise God this morning. Same thing. Now uh, we enter to worship. We depart to serve. The Lord said, enter into my gates with thanksgiving, come before my co courts with praise. Turn to the person next to you, the person next to me. Now turn to them and turn to them and say, person next to me. Uh, maybe you used to this terminology. Neighbor, I'm getting ready to get my praise on. I'm getting ready to Kazar. I'm getting ready to shout for joy. Amen. Give God a praise offering if you will, please. To the fellow Pulpiterians and fellow clergy that are scattered out through the congregation. Uh, Courtney, I see you sitting there. Uh, you're getting your praise on in the second row today. This is part one of a two-part sermon. Part two will be at the 11 o'clock service. Um, part two will be at 11 o'clock service, so you better hold your seat. Um, <laughs> now, um, this, this sermon is a sermon to encourage for this season, for this Christmas season to encourage as well because uh, the year is almost over. Amen? I'm going to give you two passages of Scripture. Both come from the Old Testament. The first one is Proverbs 6, verses 30 through 31. And that's for the restitution for man. The second Scripture is Job 20. 15, verse 15. That's Proverbs 6, verses 30 through 31, and Job 20, verse 15, for our scripture text for this morning, for the first part of the two-part sermon. Will you read with me, please, Proverbs 6, verses 30 through 31. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Then Job chapter 20, verse 15. He hath swallowed down riches. Talking about Satan. Satan hath swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. I'm going to read verse 31 of Proverbs uh, 6 again. But if he be found, if the thief be found, he shall restore sevenfold unto you. He shall give all the substance of his house. And then Job 20 verse 15 he hath swallowed down riches. Satan has swallowed down your riches. And he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Our subject for this first part of our sermon is cough it up. A Amen. 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 Somebody didn't hear you. Turn, turn, turn toward somebody next to you and say cough it up. Amen, somebody. God bless you. God, God said to me, uh, Bishop Blake, to, uh, to announce to the devil here at the cathedral this morning uh, that he has to cough up your goods. God told me that I was to prophesy over your lives today and to release an anointing for restitution. Everybody say restitution. I may not be talking to everybody at the cathedral, but I know I'm talking to somebody that has lost some stuff in this year and you want to get it back in 2016. I'm talking to somebody in here this morning. Uh, I'm on an assignment today and I have, I have a mandate 
on my life. I have a mandate on me today, a mandate to preach in this house, to prophesy in this house, and to prophesy to all those who are hearing my voice uh, via, via live stream, doing, or however you're hearing me today, one word, and that word is restitution. Everybody shout restitution. The devil is going to cough it up today. I feel the urgency. I feel the urgency. Job 2015. Job 2015. Job chapter 20, verse 15. The year is 2015. I'll let that marinate. 2015. 18 more days before the end of this year. So that's why it's, I'm on assignment today. It's not by chance that you're here and that I'm here. I'm on an assignment because now, and I want you to remember this statement. I know some of us had a great year thus far, but most of us struggle in some areas of our lives. But remember this, if you remember nothing else I say today. Uh, that, that before you entered this year and before you entered any trial or tribulation, uh, be it health-wise, financially, any kind of tribulation that you entered, God had already placed on his calendar the expiration date. He'd already placed on his calendar when it will end. Amen. The key word here is his calendar. Not our calendar, because once we get into a, a, a problem, a concern, an ailment, we want it to end right now. But God has placed on his calendar because he said, I'll lose no, not one. He said, I'll be there in your times of trouble. I'll be there closer than a brother. If it's been stolen from you, God said, get ready for restitution. There may be many different names or titles, but ultimately... It is the devil who is the thief. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. God said, I've come. Jesus said, Jesus said, I come to bring you life and to bring it to you more abundantly. Anybody ready for abundant life? The Bible says in our first text, Proverbs 6, verse 31, if the thief is found or caught, he should restore sevenfold. He should give all the substance of his house. And then, of course, Job 2015, where we're going to drop anchor today, this morning, uh, Job 2015, uh, the Lord says that the devil has to cough up your goods and the Lord said I will cause him to cough it up from the depth of his belly I shall hit him in his gut and make him cough up what he has stolen from you now let me help somebody today it doesn't matter what's been stolen from you or how it's been stolen I, I, I come to prophesy today is the day of restitution Restitution is coming to you. Somebody shout restitution. We have caught the thief. We have identified that rat. We know who that rascal is. Don't you be afraid of Satan, brother pastor. Restitution. What is the definition for restitution? Well, let me give you three definitions here. Number one, restitution is an act of restoring or a condition of being restored number two restitution uh, uh, is uh, is a restoration of something to its rightful owner are you getting uh, you're getting it now number three uh, uh, restitution is a legal action serving to cause restoration of a previous state now remember that third one a legal action serving to cause restoration of a previous state it means to get it back and to get it back like it was new 
Uh, watch this. What's it? If there's one thing the devil, devil hates as a, as a child of God who knows the word and believes the word, one thing he's afraid of is when we uh, come together as a sacred assembly and we hear the word of God and we are challenged by it and we act on it, then he's in trouble. Now, let me help us with the Bible. If, if there's one thing the Bible is, it is a record of God restoring. From Genesis to Revelation, my God is a restorer. If there is any testament of God's ability to restore and bring restitution, it would have to be Ezekiel chapter 37, now verses 1 through 10. You find there the greatest restitution in man's life. That valley of dry bones. George represents the greatest grief. The greatest misery, the greatest loss, and the greatest destruction possible. Let's visit that valley. It epitomizes and capsulizes the very essence and totality of the word hopeless. It is a picture of the thief in his full destructive powers. That valley of dry bones represents every area of human need and brokenness known to humanity every sickness every disease every bondage and oppression every financial struggle every fine family strife every struggle is represented in that valley of dry bones if you stopped at verse 2 there would be nothing but hopelessness and despair but into that dreary valley of hopelessness, misery, and death came a word from God. <laughs> God said to Ezekiel, uh, come here, preacher. <laughs> come here, preacher. I don't want you to go down to the valley and, and, and tell stories and make the people feel good. Come here, preacher. Don't go down there and scratch itching ears because they, their ears are dead anyway. Come here, preacher. I want you to go and prophesy. I want you to go and declare and decree the word of the Lord. Prophesy restitution. Prophesy restoration. Prophesy life. Prophesy resurrection prophesy new life prophesy new beginning and as he prophesied the power of God invaded that valley and as Ezekiel prophesied sinews and flesh came upon those bones and skin began to cover those dry bones you know the story and as he continued to prophesy there was a noise and a shaking the bones began to come together in perfect order bone to his bone uh, this is God restoring and putting it back together and putting it in right order putting it in divine order when God restores he restores it in right order when, when God restores ah, the order comes together perfectly when we restore sometimes we miss too many steps but when God restores God puts it in divine order let me preach a minute here watch this watch this then as he continued to prophesy the wind of God began to blow uh, and the breath of God began to fill their lungs and, and they stood up on their feet a great army the wind is the power of the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter how good it looks it doesn't matter how good it sounds. Without the anointing, without the Holy Ghost, it's dead. But when he comes, when you release the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, when you're sitting in worship service and you release the power, you let him have his way. He will cause you to praise God and please God. And in the midst of the worship service, you'll find Satan will cough some things up. 
I know I'm talking to somebody today. I know I'm talking to somebody who may have felt like these bones. You've been stripped bare, broken in pieces, hung out to dry. You know who you are. You're sitting here. You look beautiful. You look like you came to praise God. But on the inside, there's some turmoil. The devil has stolen from you and he has robbed from you. Maybe it's physical. The devil has attacked your body. Maybe it's finances. Your finances have dried up. Or maybe it's your marriage. Your marriage is rocky. He's stolen your joy. He's stolen your peace. He's stolen, the, he's stolen your self-respect. He's stolen your dreams. And, and he, he, he's stolen your hopes and your future. He's stolen your praise. You, you can't praise him like you used to. He, he's stolen your shout. You, you can't shout like you used to. But God said, shields on this second Sunday in December 2015. Tell my people, don't write it off. It ain't over. God said, tell them it ain't over. It's not over. He's getting ready to slug the devil in his gut and make him cough it up. Somebody shout, cough it up. Yeah. How many of you ready? Come on, I'm not talking to everybody. Now. If you're nodding off, if you... Yeah, if, you, if, you're not, if you're not with me right now, I, I'm, I'm going to get you here. But how many, how many are ready for, for, for Satan to cough up your goods? No, no, I'm not. I'm talking to somebody now. Now, now you may be well healed in every way of your life, but he's stolen something from you. Ah, if you can't praise him like you're used to, that, he's stolen that. You need that back. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm talking about the people who are ready for him to cough it up. Then you shout, cough it up. Somebody just need to get mad at the devil today. Get mad at that rascal. Well, I didn't come just to preach, Bishop, Bishop Blake. I didn't come just to preach. My, my mission is to make, make your congregation angry. I want to make you angry with a thief. I want a cathedral, I want you to be angry with the devil. I want you to be angry with the rascal who had the tenacity, the audacity to break in your house and swallow up your goods. I want you to get angry with that rascal. I want you to get so mad with him today that you will dare him and command him to cough it up. I'm here to prophesy and the authority and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and to declare to you and prophesy restitution. Shout restitution. Restitution in your finances. Restitution in your health. Restitution in your family. Restitution in your home. Restitution in your marriage. Restitution in your church. Renovation is restitution. The renewed covenant with God for 2016 is restitution. I prophesy divine reversal for everybody who will receive today. Somebody say restitution. Somebody's been cheated out of your property somebody in here today you've been cheated by the court system somebody been cheated by people you thought were your friends somebody's been cheated by the government somebody's been cheated by enemies and frenemies somebody's been cheated by the devil but God said shields tell them to get ready for a turnaround to get ready for restitution I will cause the devil you can you can shout cough it up but God said I'll cause him to cough it up <laughs> I believe restitution is coming I believe restitution is here it may look to you and feel like the devil has stolen and devoured everything that belongs to you. But remember what restitution means. I told you to remember that third definition. Remember what it means. The third definition, a legal action serving to cause restoration 
to a previous state or condition. That's what I came to tell you. There is a legal action taking place in the spirit realm today. <laughs> Proverbs 6, the thief has been caught and the righteous judge, Jehovah God, has ordered him to restore everything that he has stolen and the devil is about ready to cough on you right now. Job 2000, watch this, Job 2015. He hath swallowed down riches and he shall cough them up again. God shall cast them. Watch this, you don't have to cast them. You just gotta trust God's word. The, uh, Job 20, 20, 2015. God shall cause Satan to cast them out of his belly. I like when God gets involved uh, intimately in my life. Because when I cast some things, I leave some things behind. But when God cast them, Pilate, God cast it out perfectly. Watch. I shall cast them out of his belly. Let's, let, 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 let's, visit, let's visit some testimonies. Job's testimony fits his sermons perfectly. Maybe fit yours as well. Job lost everything that he had. In a matter of hours, he lost all his riches, his children, his health, and his wealth. Satan took everything he had, but that wasn't the end of it. God restored Job and gave him double for his trouble. You can't stop at Job chapter 1. And you can't, you can't, you can't be discouraged in chapters 2 through chapter 41. You got to know that God already has determined an end to your trouble. On his calendar, it was chapter 42. God restored double for his trouble. Let me give you another background scripture. Here's a cross reference. Joel 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 25 and 26 in Joel. God said to Joel, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm has taken away and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall not be ashamed. Let me give you another cross reference and then we'll, we'll head to a close. Psalms 102 verse 13 says, thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. That's the word of the Lord for you today. I came to prophesy restitution and restoration. I came to declare to you your set time is come. The time to favor you is right now. Touch your neighbor and say the favor is now. The favor of God is on you. This is your season of restitution and restoration. You got to believe that God's season is always in season. Hallelujah, somebody. I know sometimes, I know sometimes, I know sometimes, uh, I know sometimes, watch this, watch this, Pastor Blake, watch this. I know sometimes you may feel like God lost your number. You feel like God, God lost your cell number. He doesn't, he doesn't tweet, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't Facebook you, he, he doesn't get in contact with you anymore. You feel like God has forgotten about you. But I'm telling you today, God has numbered every hair on your head. God has not forgotten about you. Nothing. You know what? I'm so glad God doesn't consult our past to bless us in our present and our future. You can write that down. I want to remember that. I'm so glad he doesn't consult my past because I wouldn't have a great present and a greater future in head of me. The Bible is full of testimonies. Let me give some testimonies here. God remembered Hannah. He remembers you. God remembered Hannah and gave her a son, the prophet Samuel. God remembered Noah 
and dried up the flood of waters with the wind. God remembered Abraham and delivered Lot on his account. God remembered Samson and anointed him one last time. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and sent deliverance to Israel. And God remembered us and he sent his son Jesus and he had your name etched in the palm of his hand. So when they stretched him wide and drove nails in his hand, the nails drove right into your etched name on Calvary's cross. And I want you to know today that God remembers each person in here. You must remember God, God, watch this, and renew your covenant for the new year 2016. Satan's going to cough it up before the end of the year, but you're going you're gonna to be blessed through 2016. Some of you already got been coughed on this morning. Some of you already got it, but the rest of us going to catch up with you before I take my seat. Shake somebody's hand. Shake somebody's hand. Shake somebody's hand. Take somebody's hand. Shake their hand and tell them God didn't forget you. Tell them God didn't forget you. Tell them to hold on just a little while longer. Hallelujah, somebody. Give God a praise offering. <laughs> Pastor Vance, some of you have wondered why it has taken so long. Why has your healing been delayed? Why has your miracle or your financial breakthrough been delayed? There are two reasons I know for sure. Number one, God is working on your blessing. He wants you to give, God, give him the praise while you're waiting. He wants to give you the best and the best takes time. God has promised you Boaz, but a lot of you have gotten impatient with God and ended up with Bozo. I'm not speaking of a person so much now. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the brothers. But I am speaking of God's perfect blessings in God's time. Versus our impatience and unwillingness to trust God's wisdom. God has promised us a forest and we settle for a tree. The second reason why it's taking time, the second reason is God is working on us. He's not only working on our blessings, he's working on us. He's getting us ready to know how to handle and how to appreciate the big blessing when it comes. Some of us can't handle big blessings. Some of us lose our head, lose our mind, and lose our way. So God has to get us ready. How many of you are ready for restitution today? How many of you are ready for restoration today? How many are ready for God to hit the devil in the gut and make him cough up your goods today? Don't you remember, David, if you're standing up, you can help me close. Don't you remember David, when he returned to Ziklag, when he got there, the enemy had stolen everything, had taken all the children and taken all the wives and taken all the goods. And, and when David got back to Ziklag, then his men wanted to stone him, say, you, you had us away uh, from, from our family and the devil has stolen everything. And, and then, then David, you got to do like David sometime. Yeah, David, David counseled himself. Sometimes you can't go to a best friend and ask them to agree with you. Their agreement may not be in line with what God wants you to have. You got to counsel yourself. David counseled himself, Bishop, and said, Lord, should I pursue the enemy or should I just let this be? God said, not only should you pursue, pursue the enemy, but you're going to overcome the enemy and you're going to get all your stuff back. When you overcome the enemy, 
the enemy is going to cough up everything that he stole. Watch this now. Watch this, watch this. But David didn't wait until he caught up with the enemy. The Bible says David began to praise God right there in Ziklag. He praised him in a place of misery. He praised him in a place of dissolution. He praised him in a place where there was misery. Don't wait till the cough up has come. You got to praise him right now. Some of you in here today, you may be just like David was. You may be in ICU, the intensive care unit. You may be in a critical condition in your, in your life, in your walk, in your health, in your finances, in your relationships. You may be in the darkest hour of your life. It may look impossible. It may look hopeless. But God sent me here today. <laughs> to speak into your life restitution renew your covenant with God renew your covenant with your church renew your covenant with your leadership God sent me here today to tell Satan that he has to cough up your goods now I can demand it but when the demand comes from you I'm here to tell you that same God that spoke to Joel, that spoke uh, to David, says the same thing to you today. You shall pursue your enemy, you shall overtake your enemy, and you shall recover everything that he has stolen. It doesn't matter how bad it looks, or how bad it feels, or how bad it sounds going to my seat you may look around and you see nothing but ashes but if you will follow David's example and begin to encourage yourself I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to encourage yourself right now encourage yourself right now alright your time is up now encourage yourself in the Lord right now. Get your praise on and begin to praise God. If you do, God will fight for you and he will cause the devil to turn loose everything that belongs to you. Everything he swallowed up through the year 2015, he's got to cough it up today. If you'll give God some serious praise, Stop playing around. Don't just make noise. Make a joyful noise. If you give God some serious praise, you will do some serious damage to Satan. Can I get three witnesses today? How many of you ready? How many are ready to slap the devil in the face and get your stuff back? Get your health back. Get your wealth back. Get your, get your, get your love back. Get your place back. Get your shout back. Give God a praise right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, today, I don't want you to just magnify God. I want you to glorify God just to exalt him I don't I don't want you to pray right now don't petition right now just some plain powerful high praise for who he is watch this there are two reasons I want you to praise us out in this sermon the first sermon we're gonna praise God for what he's already done Praise him for past victories. Praise him for past miracles, past deliverances, past healings, past salvation, past breakthroughs. Praise him for what he's done. Praise him in the song. Praise him in the dance. Praise him with a loud voice. 
now. The second praise. Let's praise him for what he's doing right now. Praise him for the miracles. Praise him for healing you. Praise him for restoration. Praise him for your breakthrough. Praise him for healing your marriage. Praise him for bringing the prodigal son or daughter back home. Praise him for deliverance from every habit and addiction that was out there to destroy you. Praise him for the new doors of opportunity. Praise him for the new level of anointing. Praise him for the power in your life. Praise him because he called you out. Praise him because he chose you. Praise him because he's anointed you. Praise him because it's already done. Praise him like your future is already set. Praise him with some undignified praise. You may not, you may not understand it. And you may not agree with this. But I believe your praise is a prophecy. Let me break that down. You may have never heard this before. Your praise is prophesying your miracle. You still got some problem, but you're praising them like God has already healed them. That's prophecy. Your praise is your prophecy. <laughs> Your praise is prophesying your miracle, your healing, your deliverance. Your praise is prophesying your breakthrough because you're praising and praising God just like it's already done. Watch this. I know what's coming to you by listening to and watching your praise. Let me do that one more time. If you don't praise him, in the midst of the storm you don't believe the God who can quiet the storm if you don't praise him in the midst of your problems your illness and your financial disparities you don't believe the God that said I'll deliver you from them then I know that you don't believe in your prophecy of your future turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you look better in the future now watch me praise God for what he's already done I'm going to my seat. I'm going to give the mic to my bishop. <laughs> but some of you have moved out of ICU in the midst of the service. Some of you are coming off the critical list in the midst of the service. Somebody's miracle is being released right now. Huh? Somebody just got a supernatural recovery. I'm going to take my seat. I'm going to take my seat. But no matter what the doctor said, God is a restorer. God is a keeper. God can bring it all back. The enemy, Satan, is leaning back right now. Right now. I want you to touch three people and tell them, saints, you might want to give me some room. Touch three people and tell them you might want to give me some room because Satan, is getting ready to rear back and cough all over me. God Almighty, go cough, 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 cough.
Wait a minute. There's a whole lot of coughing going on in here. If you didn't get coughed on yet, maybe you ought to touch somebody who's been coughed on. You can tell them because they got a smile on their face. They got a shout in their voice. They got a dance in their feet. You can tell they've been coughed on. You can tell they've been coughed on. When I count to three, I want you to lift your hands in praise. Get up on your feet and dance like David danced. I want you to be undignified now. When I count to three, I want you to praise God like the cough has already occurred. One, two, three, praise him. The devil just lost all the stuff that he swallowed that belonged to you. But that's why you can shout, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Mike Bishop, because I'm, I'm fired up now. You better take this mic. I'll start preaching part two. Take this mic. Watch this. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. When I came to West Angeles, I came in with a shout. I just shout, 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 shout. All right. 